Right, so what are hydrocarbons? Well, hydrocarbons are molecules, they are substances that contain only carbon and hydrogen. And that's where the name comes from. So you take carbon, you take hydrogen, you put them the other way around, you take the jun off, and then you just add them together. Hydrocarbon. The key thing is, if you're asked to define these in the exam, it is hydrogen and carbon only. And there's a reason for this, um, and if you use two molecules, so ethane and ethanol. So here's my ethane, here's my ethanol. This is a hydrocarbon. This is not a hydrocarbon. There's a key difference there. Although this molecule, the ethanol, does contain hydrogen and carbon, it also contains an oxygen, which means it is not a hydrocarbon, because a hydrocarbon, such as this one, ethane, only contains carbon and hydrogen, and that's a very, very important point. So, types of hydrocarbon. Well, there's a particular group of chemicals, um, a family of chemicals, which are hydrocarbons, and these are called the alkanes. So alkanes are hydrocarbons. They are specifically saturated hydrocarbons, and we've already looked at the definition of what the term hydrocarbon means, containing only hydrogen and carbon. And the term saturated is a new one there, which means that it contains only single bonds which I'll come on and highlight a little bit more clearly in a minute. Unsaturated would mean it contains double bonds. So saturated, only single bonds. Saturated, single. Good way to remember it. Now alkanes, being a family, they have a family resemblance that comes in the form of a general formula. And the general formula for an alkane is CnH2n plus 2. And this is a general formula all alkanes have it. It's kind of like a family having uh, where everyone's got big noses or ginger hair or they're very tall or whatever. All alkanes have this general formula. So for an example, methane, the most simple alkane you can get is CH4. And we can see that fits the general formula because if the N in this case is 1, C1, H4, we just don't put the 1 in then the H would be 2 times 1, add 2, which is 4. So C1, H4. Okay, And as we go up, that number obviously progressively increases. So alkanes, examples of hydrocarbons, they are saturated, which means they can only contain single bonds, and they have a general formula of CnH2n plus 2, which translates to the N being a number, and then that would allow you to calculate the number of hydrogens. They have done that in exams in the past. They've given you the number of carbons and said how many hydrogens would this uh, particular alkane have. So there are four alkanes that you're expected to know. And they're the alkanes that have the carbons 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, and a little table of them looks a bit like this. So here we have the first four alkanes. And what I, when I said, when I mentioned the number of carbons, one, two, three, four, what we can see here is this has one carbon, this one has two carbons, this one has three carbons, and this one has four carbons. Each time the number of hydrogens increases, but it does so by that rule of CnH2n plus 2. So 1 times 2 add 2 is 4. 2 times 2 add 2 is 6. 3 times 2 add 2 is 8. 4 blah, 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 is 10. So you can see they follow that general formula perfectly. And if I was given one of these, or if you were given one of these molecules, you could work out that it's an alkane, just like that family resemblance, big nose, tall, whatever, you could work out it's an alkane because of that general formula. So you can break down this what's called displayed formula into a slightly easier way of reading it. So we can take the C and the four bonds that are there. These are the single bonds, by the way. A double bond would look like that, but these obviously don't have that. So this is just a single bond. And we can make that name a little bit easier, or this diagram, sorry, and we can say CH4. And all I'm doing there is I'm taking my C and then putting the hydrogens around it. This one I can do the same, and I can say this is C2H6. For propane, C3H8. And for butane, C4H10. And in terms of the naming, they are alkanes, which means each of them ends in ane. And that's a nice giveaway that they are alkanes as well if you're given the name. In terms of the other part, the meth, eth, prop, and bute, they are what link the number of carbons. So when substances have one carbon in them, these kind of organic molecules, then they have this meth in it. If it's two carbons, eth. And if you remember back up, and I'll scroll back up to ethanol, ethanol, 
two carbons there. So the prop, propane, three carbons, and then but, butane, containing four carbons. A point also worth making here is that each carbon makes four bonds. And that's quite an important point to make in this organic chemistry topic, which there'll be more of that uh, later on. But each carbon makes four bonds. So here's my carbon. It's got one, two, three, four bonds. This carbon has got one, two, three, four bonds. And this carbon has got one, two, three, four bonds. And you can go through all of these. Those carbons are making four bonds each. And that's that whole idea of covalent bonding, creating a nice full outer shell, which is what it wants when it bonds. Just to reiterate as well, these lines here, single bonds, single covalent bonds in this particular case. And again, just to reinforce the idea that these are saturated hydrocarbons. Okay, the last part to look at is generally these hydrocarbons. I'm going to link it to alkanes and how the size changing affects the properties. Right, so here's that table, this uh, little, these four hydrocarbons there, the alkanes, methane, ethane, propane, butane. And this time, as I said, I want to look at the properties. Now, there are three properties you are expected to, to be able to talk about. And those are flammability, boiling point, and viscosity. Okay, so flammability. How does the size of this change its flammability? Well, first of all, the size here, this would be the smallest and we're talking, as we add number of carbons here, this is the biggest. That's obviously a scale going from smallest at the top here to biggest at the bottom. So flammability, what does flammability even mean? Well, flammability is how easy it is to set it on fire. So how easily will it burn? Well, methane down here, being very small here, it's incredibly easy to make it burn. So you can just stick a uh, spark to it and it will go up very easily. As we get bigger, and maybe these four aren't the best examples to use because they're all quite small, but as we get bigger and we go up to say 10 or 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 100 carbons in the chain, that gets much more difficult to make it light. So what we find then is as we go down here from smallest to biggest, this flammability decreases. So basically what I'm saying is the bigger the molecule gets, the less flammable it is. So boiling point, what does boiling point mean? Boiling point is the temperature at which the substance, the molecule, turns from a liquid to a gas. And in this case, as we go down here, as we get bigger, we find the boiling point increases. And just give you a reason for that. The reason the boiling point increases is because they get bigger and the forces between the molecules get stronger. So flammability decreases as it gets bigger. However, boiling point increases as it gets bigger. And finally, viscosity. Well, what does viscosity mean? Well, viscosity is how runny or how, how gloopy something is. So if something is very viscous, it's very thick, it's like oily, tarry, like honey. If something's not very viscous, it's very easy to flow. It's like water, for example. So as we go down here, as our molecules get bigger, we find that our, in, our viscosity also increases. They become much more gloopy. Down the bottom, as I said, you'd have something that's more tar-like, 70, 100 carbons. At the top, methane is so not viscous, it's actually a gas. So the less viscous something is, the more like water it is, the more viscous it is, the more like honey it is. So once more, flammability, as our molecules increase in size, they become less flammable, less easy to ignite. Boiling point, as our molecules get bigger, the boiling point increases, as does the viscosity. And of course, all of these things are true on the reverse. As they get smaller, the flammability would increase, the boiling point would decrease, and the viscosity would also decrease. So there you have it. Hydrocarbons, what they are, a bit about alkanes, properties. Hope that made some sense.